Welcome to another CPG webinar, a service of CPG Matters. I'm your host, John Karolewski. Thank you for joining us. Today we're talking about mobile relationship management, which changes how marketers use mobile to interact with their customers. The goal is to build a one-to-one -one dialogue. So how can marketers build lasting and profitable relationships via mobile? How did Chiquita use mobile relationship management effectively? And is this a viable solution for your brands? Joining me to answer those questions and more is Adam Levine, CEO of Fun Mobility. Don't forget to type in your questions in the box in the lower left of your screen. They'll be answered along the way and at the end of the program as time allows. So without further ado, here is Adam Levine. All right, everybody. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, and I'm delighted to be able to talk to you about mobile relationship management, a topic that's near and dear to my heart, and how you can leverage mobile to build an intimate one-to-one -one dialogue with your customers. I believe that mobile relationship management is going to fundamentally impact every aspect of uh, a CPG's business. And I, I'm interested to talk to you about how Chiquita leveraged mobile relationship management in a promotional campaign that was quite successful for them. So today what I'd like to cover in terms of information sharing is what exactly is mobile relationship management, making sense of the mobile landscape, diving into some real-world results from Chiquita, talking about how you can get people to download apps, and talking about HTML5 and how it can be used to create a hybrid app and exactly what is a hybrid app. So let's start with this poll. Um, I'd like to let everybody uh, just share their opinion on whether mobile will be transformative for their business. And we're interested just to understand how people perceive mobile and the strategic, the strategic importance over the next few years, and then we'll share a little bit of data about that. So I see I have about half the people have, uh, have responded. I'll close the poll in about another 10 seconds, and then I will share the results. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. And here are the results. So mobile will be transformative for my business. 32% of you strongly agree, 64% agree, and there was one neutral. So uh, somebody who I guess is on the fence. So let me show you why I believe, uh, for the people who answered strongly agree, why they, why they have something to uh, agree about here. And please excuse the, the question marks and the formatting of this, so this, this got a little misformatted. But essentially what you're looking at here is where people's time is being spent as a proportion of all media. And so this is data from eMarketer looking at 2009 versus 2012 and where people are spending their time. So there's been a bit of a decline in TV. Online has increased. Radio has decreased. Big decline in print and a big jump in mobile in terms of time spent. And what's, what's happening in the marketplace is that the media dollars haven't kept pace with this, and there's a lot of opportunity to build relationships with customers on mobile that isn't happening just yet. But I believe that a mobile strategy is crucial for an enterprise marketer. They, they must look at it as a central media point where they can build a relationship with the customer because this is really where their attention is going. Um, so I'd like to now ask one more question of you, which is do you already have a mobile application? And this will help me form a little bit of how I present the information that uh, will be coming here. So great, I see a lot of people participating. And I will close the poll and share the results in about 10 seconds. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. 
And here are the results. Okay, so about a third of you, a little, little less than a third, already have a mobile app. 71% do not have a mobile app. So that's actually quite useful for, uh, for me to be able to present the information. Thank you very much for your participation. Adam, we had a question just come in. It may be premature in your presentation, but the question is, what are the key metrics to evaluate mobile success? You may be covering that a little later on, but the question just came in. That's a good question. If, and I think the answer is it depends. It, it depends on what are, your, what are your mobile objectives, and what is your mobile strategy, and, and what do you want to be driving. For some customers, it's they want more store visits, so then you want to measure how many times somebody walked into the store with a mobile device. For other people, it may be you want to keep your brand top of mind, so then you want to measure things like push and open rates for content. Uh, for other people, it may be that you want them to you want to learn more about your customer. So it may be something such as um, how many people walk through a survey that enabled me to get finer tuned segmentation of my audience. So the answer is it depends. But in general, uh, I, I like to think of it around what actions did you have your audience take that have value to your business. Okay. Another question just came in you may be covering later, but is how do you make sure the app is formatted properly on different mobile devices? I just love that question <laughs> because we actually have a patent around that. Uh, so the, we're a big, and, and I'll get into that in a moment, but we are a big believer in hybrid applications where you use web technologies to format the content for different devices. And so what we really try and do is help companies um, publish content that scales automatically to the different devices because we don't think that's something that marketers should have to worry about. We think it should be simple and powerful for them, which means that the content is formatted for them by the system. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so I'd like to talk a little bit about what is mobile relationship management. We have a simple definition. This is using mobile engagement to build lasting and profitable customer relationships. And you engage the customer through activities that bring them closer to you and your brand. So this could be a coupon. Um, I'm the co-chair of the MMA's Mobile Coupon Standards Committee, and we're trying to come up with creative and technical standards for coupons. I'm a big believer that coupons can be transformative for mobile and vice versa. Um, you, surveys are a great way of getting to know your audience. We're, we're doing something right now for a retailer in New York where they ask the, the customer questions about their preferences, and then you can segment the audience based on the results. Games are great rewards and unlocks. Social conversations where people can interact with each other about your brand. Rewards, store locations, news. These are all ways to engage your customers through mobile, and through these series of engagements, you build a relationship. Um, so I'd like to ask a brief question here, which is what, what best describes your mobile strategy? Do you have a fully formed mobile strategy? Is this a work in progress, or do you just not have one? And don't worry, these are anonymous questions, so <laughs> we, won't, we won't hold you to it. But we're just interested to get a sense of you know, how people are perceiving their mobile strategy at this point. All right, and I'll close the poll in 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's see the results here. Um, okay, so for most of you it's non-existent, which is actually you folks seem to be doing better than most of the CMOs I talk to on average, work in progress and fully formed. That fully formed person, I'd really love to know uh, <laughs> what their strategy is because that's, that's unusual, I see that. Uh, okay, so this, this is great information. Um, I've seen a question, how long in general does it take us to develop a mobile app? Uh, that, that piece is quite quick. We, and I, I will cover that in a moment, but we actually can build apps uh, very, very quickly generally in a matter of weeks, sometimes in a matter of days. It's, it's really it's, it's less about the application. We have prepackaged solutions and more about what you do with the applications and what type of CRM plans you put into place. Um, 
hope that answers the question. So here's where we see mobile relation management fitting into the overall market. So if you look at this, this, uh, this graph here, you have on the x-axis, on the left side we have IT and developer-focused tools, and on the right side we have solutions aimed at marketers. And then on the y-axis you have your traditional PC CRM at the bottom, this is you know, PC-based marketing and automation, essentially, and customer relationship management. And then on the top, you have social, local, mobile. So we see mobile relationship management as social, local, mobile-focused tools that are aimed at marketers. Most mobile solution providers tend to be in the upper left quadrant because they figure, well, I need to speak to the developer, and I need to speak to the IT person, and that's how I'm going to frame my offering. And we believe mobile relation management should be driven by marketers, not by technologists. So you have to simplify the process so that marketers really have their hand on the wheel. And then in the bottom right-hand corner is the existing legacy CRM and marketing automation companies like Eloqua, Pardot, Acton, um, Exact Target, Salesforce, those types of companies that are already in the business of marketing automation. So this is how we look at the market. Um, and you know, when you think about ways you can use mobile in your business, here's just some ideas. And this gets back to the question of what are really the core KPIs you need to track. So for example, keeping your brand top of mind through mobile push alerts and newsletters and videos. Driving new traffic to retail locations through mobile demand gen where you say, okay, I'll buy some mobile media in, you know, in my target markets. I'll get people into an application. I'll give them incentives to go into a store. Enhancing existing loyalty programs. So you, you have a loyalty program and you want to add mobile rewards to the mix and make your loyalty program stickier. Or replacing your loyalty program altogether with a mobile punch card. Um, mobile sweepstakes and promotions. This is the core of what we did for Chiquita where you, you make it exciting and give people an opportunity to um, interact with a promotion, or offering mobile coupons and promotionals. And there's a lot of really interesting activity going on here. I have an interesting vantage point with my position on the committee and understanding what companies are doing with, with mobile coupons. I have a question, Adam, that came in. Uh, I built the company's mobile website with a Duda mobile, but I am having trouble inserting the tracking code from Adobe Site Catalyst. Is that something you can help? Uh, you know, I think that's a question I'm going to have to get my development group. Uh, we have a lot of experts here, Maria, that can probably help you answer that question, but that's, uh, that one zoomed above my head. But I, I think um, if, you know, mobile websites only will take you so far, in my view. Uh, if you look at the stats, customers spend four, four times as long on a mobile app than on a mobile website. Mobile website is really more functional, and mobile apps give you other benefits that you don't get with mobile web, which I'll, I'll discuss in a moment. Okay, and what, what's the best way to let customers know about the new app and, and what it does for their customer experience? There's lots of best practices to integrate awareness of your application into your existing media. So once you have a mobile app, you can actually get a lot of awareness without spending an extra dime as long as you have uh, a way to integrate it to existing media, and I will cover that in just a moment. And then on top of that, there's ways to do cost-effective mobile arbitrage and demand generation. Um, so the approach we take is a technology we call app widgets. And you can think of app widgets are essentially mobile Legos that you fit together to form mobile experiences. We fit these into what we call agile mobile apps. An agile mobile app is an app that you do not have to resubmit in order to add new features or content to. And this is where we feel that the, what's happening in the market right now is crazy because in order to add anything new to a mobile app, you have these very long and painful and expensive submission uh, uh, cycles with the app stores. And so an agile mobile app lets you add new features without resubmission. On top of that, mobile push notifications, th they're the new email. And you want to get your base opting into mobile push notifications so you can push them content anytime and anywhere, and then analyze the effectiveness of those campaigns and segment your audience based on how they're interacting with your promotions. Um, <laughs> 
So I see a question from Richard Baca. How, we, how do we resolve technical issues between retailer systems and CPG systems to support mobile coupons regardless of retailer? That's really where the rubber hits the road is on redemption. And um, there's, there's a big difference between manufacturer's coupons and store coupons in terms of the capabilities of the point-of-sale systems. Um, and I'd be happy to cover some of that offline, but we're, we're, the, uh, the, the goal of, of my committee is to enable manufacturers' coupons at retail, but um, it, it's essentially, we believe, the redemption and validation can happen through integration of those systems. We'll be supplying Adam's email address later for those uh, more technical questions for consideration later. Yes. yes. When an app widget, a good way to think about it, is a, an engaging and fun app component. So you can customize it with your own brand and content and add them to an Agile app. And so an app widget could be a coupon, it could be a news item, a store locator, a survey, a video, a game, a reward, or a lead gen form. Um, and they're designed for marketers. And so the way they're deployed is, um, uh, is so you put them into an Agile app. So here's the way to think about this. You take the native capabilities, and the reason you want an app is because you'll engage the consumer longer, you can send push notifications, you get, you get location, you get app store discoverability, you get a lot of benefits that you don't get through a mobile website. But by using app widgets, you don't have to resubmit the app every time you add a feature. And so this combines the power of native mobile apps with the real-time nature of the web. Um, I'm getting a question, how do you balance push notifications so you don't annoy the mobile user? Uh, so there's, the, the MMA is actually coming out with best practices around push notifications. If the push notification offers some value to the consumer, then they'll be receptive to it. They won't mind being interrupted. However, if the push notifications are just spamming them with things from your point of view as a marketer, then they're going to opt out. And so it's important that these MRM campaigns offer value to the consumers, and there's a certain set of things they value. I, I have a list of my top six later in this presentation. So let's take a look at Chiquita Fan Fun and, uh, and what they did, um, what their mobile campaign was like. You know, and, and Chiquita was just a great uh, company for us to get involved with. They, they really have a history of engaging marketing. They've always been quite innovative in, in their marketing and taking what is really in some ways you know, a commodity product and differentiating it through the quality of the product and the quality of the brand. And uh, you know, getting to know this company through their mobile efforts, um, we, just, we, we got a lot of respect for them and the integrity of how they approach um, their marketing. So, the, you know, some of Chiquita's um, challenges were that you know, bananas have a high household penetration rate, but only about 30% of shopping visits include, include a produce purchase. So they wanted to get more people over to the produce aisle and, uh, and getting their brand more top of mind with consumers, and they also wanted to get a promotion that leveraged retailers and helped drive traffic to the retailer stores. So companies like Safeway, Target, Walmart participated in this promotion. Um, they, uh, Chiquita is one of the Little League's uh, World Series sponsors, and uh, so they wanted to also build more awareness for their sponsorship. Um, Chiquita owns the notion of fun. They've always had this fun brand, and they've differentiated themselves from their competitors through fun which made them a, a great match with Fun Mobility in terms of you know, our philosophies. Uh, and they also they promote the Chiquita Banana as an active and healthy lifestyle. So their objectives were to leverage their Little League partnership, keep Chiquita top of mind for shoppers on each trip to the store, position themselves as the official fresh snack for Little League baseball and softball, and then connect the fun of the Chiquita brand with the fun of, of baseball through a mobile promotion. And they promoted it through these stickers you can see, which they put on the bananas at, at retail. So their objectives were to leverage the partnership with Little League, uh, differentiate the Chiquita brand, uh, demonstrate to their retailers that they're using technology to drive traffic to participating retailers, 
leverage their existing social media efforts and essentially have some activities that kept the Chiquita brand top of mind. Some of the challenges we had was uh, there we only had six weeks from the contract signing to launch. They had millions of QR coded bananas on boats that were already in the water, so uh, we had to. Um, that was kind of a uh, drop dead date. It was the first time I've motivated my engineers through banana shipments, but it worked. Um, they had uh, they had a predetermined little league schedule that we had to um, that we had to adhere to, and then they wanted it on iOS and Android and get it into a bunch of retailers and drive awareness. Adam, a question just came in. What is a mobile punch card? Uh, a mobile punch card is a, when I say punch card, I mean when you you know get a cup of coffee, you they they punch it and they say, okay, after ten coffees, you get a free one. We we have an app widget that essentially reproduces that functionality. Mm -hmm. Okay, acts as a mobile loyalty card. Um, so what we did is we we built them an agile app so we could update the the features without resubmitting it. And we used um, we had a home home page app widget, a leaderboard app widget where the it, the the users were stack ranked based on their engagement with the application. We had a card maker app widget which used the Little League branding so people could take a photo from their phone or from their Facebook page, customize it with the Little League brand and the brand of the retailer, and send it to a friend. A trivia game which was all about bananas and Chiquita. Uh, check-in, which when people went to a participating retailer, they would check in and they would be entered into a sweepstakes, a store locator so they could find where they could go get these sweepstakes entries. And, uh, and so we, we put this whole thing together as a combination of an Agile app and the, the app widget. And so here's what it came out like. So you can see here in the middle we have um, – we have a uh, we have the center homepage app widget. You can go and look at the leaderboard and see the activity of people near you. We had the the country divided into different locations, as well as a national leaderboard. They can go play in the arcade, which would take them to the trivia game. We have a carnival app widget where you can uh, replace the things that the consumer is throwing balls at with elements that represent your brand. So for Chiquita, we had apples and bananas and pineapples. Uh, Question, Adam. Can uh, an app such as this, the games, uh, be transferred to a website easily so people can play the game on their website as well? No. We, uh, so we focus on mobile and mobile only. Um, we can integrate the promotion into a website and let people get to the mobile app, but our focus as a company is – being the best company in the world at mobile relationship management. And so there's other companies that can help you do web games. Um, Before the next slide, another question, Adam, quickly. Uh, my understanding of mobile phone stats, 96% of U.S. has a mobile phone. Of those, 50% are smartphones. If an app needs to run on a smartphone, are we leaving out over 50% of consumers? Um, so the answer to that is yes and no. If you look at the shoppers that are walking into your store with phones and moms, the penetration of smartphones is higher among that demographic. And you also have to look at the trends. And essentially what is happening is on new phone purchases, something like 80% of new phone purchases, 80, 80, 80 to 90% are smartphones. So yes, at this particular point in time, it's, I think it's more like 55, 45 actually, and I think you'll see also 40% um, of phones are sold during December. So after this Christmas season, you'll undoubtedly see a higher ratio of smartphones. But essentially, the world is going to smartphones. So we decided uh, – we actually have a big legacy business in feature phones and the work we did for carriers and brands there. But for this platform, we are focusing exclusively on smartphones because that's where the future is, and that's where you can build a more intimate one-to-one -one relationship with your customer. So basically, time is on our side. Um, and then there's the card maker, as you can see, where the, the, the card maker can be created and sent. Um, 
Now, I had some questions earlier about awareness. So these are the various methods by which we generated awareness for the promotion. We did social media posts. We did point of sale in retailer stores. We, um, we did uh, SMS campaigns to drive awareness, the QR codes and secondary uh, banana stickers, and invites to the Little League base. So, um, so here, and, and this is an important point, um, we created a mobile optimized landing page, which is something we provide with every Agile mobile app because we think it's just so important. And the reason this is important is this gives you a way to integrate the campaign into your existing online and offline media efforts. So we had a question before, how do you generate awareness for the app? What you have is you have some kind of mobile landing page which you can share or a QR code somebody can scan which takes them to the landing page, not directly to the App Store but to the landing page first. And the benefits of this is it lets you integrate and track conversion from your existing channels as well as then give the consumer something to look at and understand the value of, of downloading the application. A related so question, Adam. How do you track the effectiveness of the mobile app? So we, the, in this particular case, what we tracked is what percentage of the base actually took the application into the store and checked in. So that, that was the important metric. You know, did, how did we change customer behavior in terms of their store visits? And a follow-up question on Chiquita. Uh, did you buy SMS data for the campaign, or does Chiquita have that data? I think Chiquita had some, some uh, data around SMS phone numbers, which they sent, uh, um, they sent text to. Okay, and, uh, and so of the campaign, um, we had 45,000 entries and 159,000 visits. Uh, 31,000 customers signed up for the newsletter. Uh, this was an email newsletter which Chiquita wanted to get customers signed up into. We launched the app in six weeks, um, and we got 20% of the users to check in at a participating retailer to enter the sweepstakes, and 40% of the users actually created and shared a Chiquita-branded card with their friends. Um, we had an average of 10 plays, 10.7 trivia game plays, uh, and four banana shot games, so we got some good engagement with the base. And, uh, and we received the, uh, with Chiquita the 2012 IBM Leader Award for Excellence in Retail. So One it of was our a, attendees, Adam, wants to know what retailers were involved. Can you release that information? Uh, yes, it was, uh, let's see, I think there were eight, I want to say. There was, uh, it was Safeway. Kroger's, Sprouts, uh, Walmart, BJ's, um, Publix, and a couple others. So I don't have the, the 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 list, the complete list. But if you want to contact us offline, would be happy to share it with you. So I want to give you a couple things to to think about here, in terms of uh, mobile. And one of the things, you know, I alluded to this list earlier, how do you get somebody to, to download your app and how do you interact with them? Consumers, if you look at what consumers want, it boils down to six things. They want relevant information. They want deals and discounts. They want social interaction to interact with other people. They want status based on their activity. These leaderboards are very, very powerful um, behavioral, uh, you can get people to drive behaviors you want them to have. They want rewards for, for doing things. They want to be congratulated for doing things. And they want fun. They want, they want activities that they enjoy how to do. And so there was an earlier question, how do you keep the consumer from you know, turning off when you send them push notifications? And the answer is you have to send them something that they value. And if you build that relationship with them through activities that have value to them, then you will bring your brand closer. You'll keep your brand top of mind. And you can do this very cost effectively. It's, it's actually a lot less expensive than building complicated mobile applications, putting that effort into the post-download interactions and building campaigns that drive different kinds of consumers to take the actions that have value for your, for your brand. 
Um, I want to show you a couple examples of some Agile apps and, and app widgets to give you some ideas of the types of uh, mobile promotions you can do. So um, this is an example of a check-in screen where you incentivize the user to check in to receive a game or a prize. So you don't have to set up a sweepstakes for a check-in program. You can have some games in the application, but they're locked. And then you can say, well, come to my store and check in, and I'll unlock a game or unlock a wallpaper. And consumers respond to that because they feel like they're getting something. It doesn't cost you any more because you've already incorporated those features into your app, but instead of just giving them away, you, you offer it as a prize for the action that you want the consumer to take. Um, trivia is a great way to segment your audience or to keep, to keep some information top of mind in, in a fun way. And then obviously coupons that can be integrated, either a store coupon or a manufacturer's coupon. The store coupon is a lot more straightforward because there are several companies doing great work with uh, perishable point-of-sale codes who we work with. So essentially, um, we're combining these two concepts actually into uh, a, a program where if somebody engages with the app and visits retail, they receive discounts. A new question, Adam. Uh, can you work a click-to-call button internationally, or does the area code uh, mess that up? That's a great question. I, I would think you would. I would think it would work the same way that it would work on your phone, where you'd probably have to be calling in country. Um, you could probably do something where you see where the person, the 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 phone will tell you where the person is. So I'm sure you could sort that out. We have not encountered that issue uh, so far, although we're looking at some international deployments right now. But uh, we've done our deployments have been domestic so far. Okay. One question to uh, the app on the screen here: What was the coupon redemption rate for the QR code for five dollars off offer? Was that just a made-up one for an example? Was that a real one? This is an example. We actually have a, a, a the coupon that we're actually doing at retail right now is. Um, it's, a, it's a store code generated by the retailer. And one more, can you define status on the list of what individuals are looking for? Yes, it's their ranking relative to other people inside the app. Okay. In fact, you can see it right here. Um, the leaderboard over to the right. So this is, this is an actual deployment we did for a social media conference in Chicago. And um, so there's, there's other event apps out there. But they're all just these complicated, not fun things. And, and our philosophy as a company is that you want a simple, powerful experience. So from the consumer perspective, you, you want a low cognitive load. You don't want them to have to think about what action they want to take. So this is our event solution where you just have a bunch of big buttons. I tap on the upper left to get a schedule. I tap on the upper right to get a map. I tap in the lower left to get activities. I tap in the lower right to see my status relative to the other uh, participants. And, um, and actually, here you see the picture of the person because in this application you have to log in with LinkedIn. So you see the person's name, you see their title, and then, uh, and, you, and then you see their ranking, and you see your ranking relative to all the other people. So this is gamification where you encourage behaviors, and you want to encourage those behaviors that have value to you as a marketer. Um, this is an application that we did for uh, the CMO Council. The CMO Council is a network of 6,000 CMOs from around the world that collectively um, control about $300 billion in media spend. And they wanted an, a content publishing application to keep their, uh, their, their members informed on the go. So the uh, content publishing solution lets them repurpose existing media. They can take their blog, their RSS feed, their YouTube movies, their PDF reports, and they can provide them on the go to their, um, to their council members. And then they put a lot of that content behind a registration gate. So if you want to go see their reports, you have to authenticate with LinkedIn, and this tells them the information about their audience. So they're getting new insights into their audience based on the social data 
And so instead of just having an app, they actually get audience insights that they wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Um, and they can also push surveys and um, ask, the, uh, ask their audience to give them feedback on certain information and then use that as further uh, insights and segmentation uh, to their users. Um, in terms of customer relationship management, this is uh, ways that you can let the user find a retail location and then, uh, and then give them rewards for checking in. And again, these rewards can be digital, like a game or a wallpaper, or you can offer them a coupon. Uh, and this, this gets at the heart of something like a mobile uh, punch card where you can say, I have some kind of meter, and when I get to a certain point, I'm rewarded with a coupon or some kind of, you know, some kind of freebie. We also have the capacity to enable people to share these offers across their social media channels so you can drive awareness for your brand and application by letting your users share this, this information and you can further incentivize them with free offers or status to take these actions. Um, I wanted just to ask a quick question if people know what mobile push alerts are, um, or also known as push notifications. So uh, I'll just open this up for a moment. Okay, keep, I'll keep this open for another 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, this is a very well-informed audience. That's good to hear. Because you know, the way to look at mobile push alerts or push notifications, it really is the new email. It's, it's the way that you can keep your audience engaged and informed on the go. Um, and I want to show you an example of this where um, this is our campaign creator, where you can create your campaigns and then you send a push notification. And when the customer clicks on the push notification, they see the content that you created. So this is what we, when we say agile uh, mobile applications and content publishing, this is what we mean. Once somebody installs your app, you can then push them not only push notifications, but you can actually push them in experience. And we had an earlier question about how you reach iOS and Android people on different devices. When you create an app widget here, it takes care of all that for you. So the marketer doesn't have to worry about that. They just have to worry about their message and their brand, which is what they should be worried about, not what are the sizes of the different devices. Sure. I agree, Adam, that uh, the readers of CPG Matters are well-informed, but for the 10% who didn't know what push notifications are, could you describe it in simple terms for them? Sure. Um, a push notification is essentially a mobile message that reaches the customer directly on their device. And this is distinct from an SMS message. An SMS message may cost the consumer or may cost the sender something to send. A push notification is free for both the sender and the recipient. And this push notification technology represents a massive sea change. It's literally taken billions of dollars from carrier revenue streams and put it into Apple's pocket. Um, and it's, it's another way of thinking of it is IP-based messaging. Um, it's essentially using the Internet to send push notifications that can then launch applications and content. Okay, two quick questions. If someone has a problem with the app, are there lifelines in place for them to call or text if they have a problem or a question? We have an app widget called Suggestion Box where the user can send questions, and we also have app widgets that let them interact um, with the brand essentially through the, the uh, mobile app. We also have a click to email app widget where you can tap and send an email directly. And so this is important because if the user has a problem, you want them interacting with the brand, not going out and complaining in some review site somewhere. Okay, and one more. What are you doing for Windows phones? Uh, we're looking at Windows phones right now. We don't uh, officially support that platform, but we're, we're having to look at it. 
Okay, one more follow-up to push notification. What percent of consumers actually opt in to receive push notifications? Are there any stats around that? That's a good question. I, I don't have stats around that. Um, the uh, from from what I understand from some uh, other push companies that we've talked to, that it's it's a it's a pretty good opt-in rate, and we have seen uh, you know we measure this in our uh, platform, and we have seen pretty good open rates, which indicate that most customers have been opted in. Um, so we we measure the conversion funnel. We we, we call it a tap rate. So it was essentially how many pushes did you do, how many opens did you get in that push notification, and then of the ones that were opened, what was your tap rate? So that's, that's our kind of you know, push notification funnel, which is pretty similar to an email open funnel with the exception of the tap rate. Um, and the other thing that mobile can do, and this is why we really recommend using some kind of social authentication. So my preference is to have a little bit of content that the user can use anonymously, but if they want to get into the heart of the offering, they have to authenticate through Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or Google+, some kind of social network. Because then the benefit to you as a marketer is you get insights, and you can segment and target based on those, those insights. And so maybe you get a few less users than you would if you let them use it anonymously, but then on the flip side, those users that do come in, you have some great intel and you can learn things, you know, who are your primary and secondary markets, what type of users respond to what type of promotions, and it just gives you, as a marketer, much better uh, information. So we, we, really, you know, we really encourage when we're doing a deployment for them to you know, have this, this, type of, uh, this type of registration to give them this, this type of data. Okay, new question. How do the apps collect data for you to conduct analytics? So we collect uh, we collect analytics on the app, on an application level, so things like recency, session length, um, that type of information, and then the individual app widgets collect behavioral data. So if you, every single app widget you launch collects behavioral data. So if you send out a survey, it will collect the information on the responses. If you send out, say, a check-in, it will collect, it will collect information on how many people checked in. And we collect this on an aggregate and individual user basis. So robust data was really at the core of our philosophy because we, we understood from day one that people would want to be able to see information. And we feel that a, a part of our value add are the insights that we can provide our customers through collecting this information. Okay, what are the top three KPIs that we should watch in this space? Well, from my perspective, <laughs> it's uh, what's the effectiveness of your mobile investment? I see an awful lot of money not being particularly well spent because um, people don't use an agile mobile app. They don't use a hybrid application. So w w the return on your mobile investment is poor because it, it takes so much time and cost to try new promotions out. And I would think that a KPI would be um, how many people am I touching and what sort of response rate am I getting and w are they taking the actions that I want them to take? Uh, because without the capacity to experiment in an agile way, you're going to have a very slow, expensive in interaction cycle and you're not going to be able to figure out how to communicate with your customers on mobile. You know, this is a new medium, and you know, what's going to work is going to be different on a case-by-case, brand-by-brand basis. So it really depends on what your objectives are. Are you a retailer? Are you a CPG? Are you a content publisher? Are you a multi-level marketer? And then how you want, you know, what sort of actions you want your customers to take, and, and, and how is your audience going to interact with your mobile offering? So I would say right now it's, return on your mobile development dollar in the form of agile promotions and being able to understand that data and make better decisions on the basis of that data. So I don't know if I exactly answered your question, but that's, that's how I look at it. Okay, here's an interesting question, Adam. How can this integrate with in-store media? Can you provide an example from the Chiquita program? 
for Chiquita, we had some in-store uh, media that was placed at the produce section, things like signs that encouraged somebody to participate in the sweepstakes. Obviously, there was the media, the the, the stickers on the banana. Um, you know, there's there's plenty of ways mobile can can interact uh, and essentially drive downloads and drive consumers to to get to the app in the first place, so that you can build that relationship. There's also point of sale integration, and point of sale integration really is going to happen on the loyalty card or store coupon level, so that you can have offers that the um, that the that the consumer can save and then have them applied at discount. And this is where we're doing a lot of work because we feel that mobile loyalty cards and mobile point of sale integration then provides an end-to-end -end solution for both the retailer and the consumer. Okay, any questions? We've had a flurry of questions at the end. I guess we sort of preempted this slide, Adam, but uh, if anyone else wants to ask, we can take them now. Here's one here. Can you give a range of cost? Uh, yes. So um, our approach is to keep the application development itself very inexpensive. Um, so, and, and really our interest is more in providing post-application services than it is in charging a lot of money to create the application. So we have a range of solutions. We have a retailer solution. We have a content publishing solution. We have uh, customer relationship management solutions. There's also some people use them for ERP. Um, so our prices to create the app are in the range of about $2,000 to make an iPhone app, $3,000 if you want to add um, Android, and $5,000 if you want tablet. Then we charge, depending on the solution you want, based on the app widget libraries you want to use, and we charge based on how many users use it. So um, if you have under 1,000 users, the app widget libraries are a couple hundred bucks a month, and as you add more users, those costs go up. Uh, and then we provide professional services at the rate of 150 an hour if you want us to run the campaigns, if you want us to design all of the, the MRM campaigns, if you want us to integrate into your systems. Um, we do this on an hourly basis, or the marketer can do it themselves if they wish, and we, we give them specifications on how to do that. Excellent. Do you help companies that do business-to-business -business marketing? Yes, uh, we do. Actually, we are uh, doing a deployment right now for a security company that does multi-level marketing, and uh, they want to be able to essentially um, have uh, – they want two things. They want an event application um, for their multi-level marketing programs, and they want a content publishing solution to essentially uh, keep – their people informed on the go. Basically, the CMO Council app was a, was a B2B marketing app. Okay, any more questions out there? Uh, if not, uh, and when the webinar is over, oh, we just had one come in here. Can you be more specific on how mobile can integrate with loyalty or store coupons? Uh, yes. So, um, so the, we think mobile can be helpful in a number of spots on the, uh, on the ecosystem for, for coupons. So um, on the setup and communication of offers, on the discovery and acquisition of offers from the consumer perspective, you can generate awareness through mobile. Um, then on the presentation side where you're presenting the offer, at retail, this can be done through methods like Passbook or through uh, integration to a loyalty card. So the CVS, uh, excuse me, Rite Aid has a, a really nice coupling of their loyalty. They essentially use the consumer's phone number as a unique identifier for their loyalty card. So I can get a mobile offer and I can clip it. And then I, when I go to point of sale, I just type in my mobile phone number and it, it applies to discounts. Um, and then mobile can be used for the for the validation piece, and then for redemption and reconciliation, that that can work with the existing uh, systems that do redemption and reconciliation. Okay, we've run out of time, but for those who have further questions, uh, you can uh, contact Adam Levine directly at adam at funmobility.com. For more information about CPG Matters, vis visit us at 
cpgmatters.com. Now, please take a moment to complete the post-webinar survey that will appear on your screen when you log out of this webinar. Until the next time, Adam, any closing thoughts? No. Uh, we, we have a lot of information on our site as well at fundmobility.com, and uh, we are launching a, um, a mobile education series in the beginning of the year, so we're going to have a lot of white papers and other information available on our site to educate you on all the possibilities uh, that mobile can offer your business. And, uh, and feel free to contact me, and I'd be happy to help any of you uh, in any way I can. Okay, Adam, that was truly outstanding. I learned a lot, and I'm sure our attendees did as well. Until the next time, this is John Karolewski signing off for Fun Mobility and CPG Matters.